They began in the 1960s as an Islamist Marxist student militia against the tyranny of Mohammad Reza Shah of Iran. But when they failed to win the trust of the Iranian nation after the Islamic revolution, they turned their guns on the people. Since then, the People's Mujahideen Organization of Iran, known better by its acronym, the MKO or the MEK, has assassinated more than 12,000 civilians over the past four decades. پنجره رو زدم کنار دیدم این ماشین داره آتیش میگیره سریع رفتم وسط حال دیدم شیشه آشپزخونه هم ریخت پایین رو رو برو خونه من بعد دیگه دیدم از این ماشینا دود و جمعیتی ریخت و دیگه فقط فرار کردیم بیرون دیگه از محل کار تحتیل شدیم داشتیم میرفتیم منزلمون با دوستم بعد دیگه اسکا شلو بود و سر کوچه شلو بود بعد دیگه اسکا بریم پایین تر که یه دفعه کنیم صدای انفجار من که خورد به کمرم من نمیدونم سمان موقع چی خوده چون هم جوز سرفا واسه رو به تکه داره به ماشین این گوشه این ماشین گذاشته بود فقط بچه هم دوت میزدن میرفتیم جلو یه دفعه تیراندازی میکردم تیراندازی میکردم دوباره بر میگشتیم بر میگن شوار هم هنگی گفت بیجر کمک هم کن بیجر کمک هم کن Yet the group has enjoyed full support of the Americans and the Europeans, especially in the past 10 years amidst tensions between Tehran and the West. فکر می کنم که الان برای همه روشنه بعد از پنج بار حکم دادگاه های اروپا در لیوزان بود و انگلیس When Saddam Hussein staged a bloody war against Iran in September 1980, the MKO seized the opportunity to take revenge against the Iranian nation by joining the enemy camp. Mujahideen, in fact, in the year 1361, with the presence of Saddam Hussein, the name of Mr. Tariq Aziz, in France, with the presence of the Jain and the name of the Jain, and this is the name of the Jain. همکاری رسمی و علنی سازمان مجاهدین با دولت عراق بود. ابتدا به ساکن خیلی از بچه های قدیمی با این مسئله مخالفت کردند. مخالفتشون هم به این دلیل بود که ما در حال جنگ با عراق هستیم. مردم ما ایران از طرف کشوری به اسم عراق و صدام حسین مورد تجاوز ما این عمل همکاری با صدام را نمیتونیم برای مردم خودمون توضیح بدیم و این عمل یک عمل ننگینی برای ما ما نمیتونیم به این راحتی بپذیریم بریم در مناطق زیر هژمونی صدام مستقر بشیم و از امکانات اون از جمله رادیو و نظامیش استفاده کنیم بر علیه دولت ایران بجنگیم The Iraqi dictator offered the group weapons cash and a vast military base named Camp Ashraf near the border with Iran. For almost two decades, under the command of Masoud Rajavi, the MKO staged attacks against civilian and military targets across the border in Iran and helped Saddam Hussein suppress his own domestic enemies. Isolated inside the camp, the MKO felt like. A report by the Rand Corporation concluded that the group had many of the typical characteristics of a cult, such as authoritarian control, confiscation of assets, sexual control, including mandatory divorce and celibacy, emotional isolation, forced labor, sleep deprivation, physical abuse, and limited exit options. <laughs> The MKO fell out of favor after the fall of its godfather in the wake of the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq. It brought the group into direct contact with U.S. officials. The U.S. had designated the MKO as a terrorist group in the late 1990s. Then Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld and Vice President Dick Cheney argued that the group should be used as a weapon against Tehran. In the end, the Pentagon unilaterally designated MKO members inside Camp Ashraf as protected persons and guaranteed their security in Iraq. 
In other words, the US protected a group it also designated as terrorists. As early as May 2003, the New York Times reported that Pentagon hardliners were moving to protect the MEK and perhaps reconstitute it later as a future opposition organization in Iran, somewhat along the lines of the US-supported Iraqi opposition under Ahmad Chalai did the war in Iraq. Between 2007 and 2012, seven Iranian nuclear scientists were attacked and five were assassinated. In 2012, NBC News reported that the attacks were planned by the Israeli regime and executed by MKO agents inside Iran. It was around this time that the terrorist group began working to rebuild its image in the West by launching a lavish lobbying campaign under the leadership of Maryam Rajavi, as Masoud Rajavi has not been seen since 2003. As a result, in 2009, the UK delisted the MKO as a terror group, and a few years later, in 2012, the Obama administration removed the group from the US terror list, and later relocation to Albania and convinced the country to accept the 2,700 remaining members. However, the move from Iraq to the relative safety of Albania has triggered a wave of defections. The testimony of these recent defectors follows earlier reports from groups such as Human Rights Watch, which reported former members witnessed beatings, verbal and psychological abuse, coerced confessions, threats of execution and torture that in two cases led to death. Meanwhile, at the so-called Free Iran Conference that the group stages in Paris each summer, dozens of US and UK representatives openly called Maryam Rajavi as the leader of Iran. It is clear that US and UK politicians are not looking for what they call a regime change in Iran, but they are playing a simpler game. In their eyes, backing the MKO is the easiest way to irritate Tehran. As they know, the real power of the terrorist group is hardly more than the assassination of defenseless people. In the words of Paul a supposed victory, no matter what comes afterwards. MKO members in Albania are mostly acting as a cyber army against the Islamic Republic of Iran. According to Mark Owen Jones, an academic who studies political media, thousands of suspicious Twitter accounts emerged in early 2016 with Iran as their location, which posted in support of the MKO using the hashtags Hashtag Iran Regime Change, Hashtag Free Iran, and Hashtag I Stand with Maryam Rajavi. For most of its life in exile, the MKO was financed by Saddam Hussein. After his fall, the group has desperately been looking for a new sponsor, but has always denied it is financed by Saudi Arabia. Yet, when the former Saudi intelligence chief, Prince Turki Al Faisal, attended the group's 2016 rally in Paris and called for the fall of the Iranian regime, it raised suspicions again about the role of Riyadh as the group. According to Ervand Ebrahimian, a professor at the City of University of New York, the money definitely comes from the Saudis. There is no one else who could be subsidizing them with this level of finance. In an article published in 2018, Al Bawaba revealed that three tons of gold ingots and four suitcases of Rolex watches were given to the MKO by the Saudis when the group was still in Iraq. To sum up, the MKO is the epitome of hypocrisy, the enemy of the people, with the blood of thousands of innocent people on its hands. It seeks to present itself as a group in exile that fights for the freedom of the Iranian people. The group reveals hypocrisy at a higher level, whitewashing this cult of terror to fight against Tehran. This is a textbook example of hypocrisy by the self-proclaimed champions of democracy.